Hi, I want to start a new series called Every Movie Fill in the Blank. I love getting movie recommendations from my family and my friends and from Letterboxd, but ultimately my favorite way to find new movies to watch is by just obsessing over an actor and then watching their entire filmography. I like to keep track of the people I've done this with by making rank lists on Letterboxd. And I have quite a few at this point, but I wanted to start with Miles Teller because I am caught up on all of his feature films. He does have some TV shows that I haven't seen or haven't come out yet. He does have some movies in the works as well, but all of the films that have been released, I have seen and I have ranked. The first film that I saw Miles Teller in was either Divergent or The Spectacular Now. I'm not sure which because I definitely saw them around the same time, but it was one of the two. Why I like Miles so much is I think there's something very attractive about the way that he interacts with the camera, with the other people that he's acting with. He always has great chemistry. I think he could have chemistry with a brick wall if he wanted to. And I think he also has a good hold on the type of characters he should be playing. He has such a great mix of not totally being the jock character, not totally being the goofy, silly, let's get up to no good best friend or the charmer or whatever else. Like he's such a good mix of all of those different qualities. And usually in actors, I feel like especially in young actors that started with the kind of like YA trajectory that he had, we usually see very hyper specific typecasting. And I feel like he just as a person does such a great job of blending together all of those types of characters. So according to Letterboxd, Miles has 17 completed feature films. We're gonna start from the bottom and work our ways to the top. I'll try to explain a little bit about each of the movies and how I felt about them. So let's get into every movie Miles Teller. At 17, we have 21 and over. This is kind of a, a buddy party kind of movie that we've seen with like The Hangover or Super Bad or Project X. This movie was released in 2013 and I gave it a half star. From what I remember, a lot of the humor was quite insensitive or inappropriate and I just didn't walk away with anything from it. And it felt like anything new to me and it's just not necessarily my type of film. In 16th place, we have Allegiant, which is the third film in the Divergent series. This series was very disappointing for a lot of people. It was a beloved uh, YA book series before the movies came out. And I myself didn't grow up reading them. I was more into like the Hunger Games, but I know a lot of people that were very disappointed and even like they canceled the last movie in the series, which is extremely telling. This film came out in 2016 and I gave it a star and a half it just kind of fell flat. I do enjoy a lot of the people in this film and I even enjoyed Miles' character Peter. I That's one of my favorite character tropes is you don't know whether or not you should trust them and whether or not once you let them back in are they going to stab you in the back. And I thought that that was a great role for him to play but the series itself just didn't go over well. In 15th place we have the 2011 remake of Footloose. This remake also did not go over well. I gave this film two stars which looking back feels generous but a lot of people didn't like the remake. There just wasn't a reason enough to do it and a lot of the actors in it didn't really sell it for me. However, I feel like a lot of people do agree that the one redeeming quality in it is Miles. He's the character that you are rooting for, that you do kind of care about what happens to him and he just brings a little bit of life to an otherwise lifeless remake. In 14th place we have that awkward moment which came out in 2014 and I gave this film one and a half stars. I feel like this was one of his movies that I was most disappointed by because with Zac Efron and Michael B. Jordan there's just so much potential but it just kind of fell flat and I felt like it didn't do enough to make it different or stand out. In 13th place we have Fantastic Four which came out in 2015. If you like reading about just Hollywood discourse around different films and remakes, I highly suggest reading up on all of the drama behind this movie. It's very interesting and I couldn't even begin to try to explain what happened to it. 
I gave this film two stars and most people agree that this was not a great film. I think the one thing that they did really stick the landing on was getting across that like these kids would be terrified to all of a sudden have these powers and it's not even necessarily like a struggle of what they should do with it and good versus evil but just like the pure implication that they've changed that radically is terrifying to them and I think that they did get that across really well. In 12th place we have Get a Job which was a 2016 post-grad film. Again I felt like this this could have been good this could have had like a really good setup for just a finding your way in Los Angeles in your 20s and you and your buddies and your girlfriend like just overall like good vibe to it but instead it just felt kind of flat and there wasn't a lot to it that felt significant. I gave this film one star which is a good segue into explaining that my rankings and my star ratings don't always go hand in hand especially for a ranking that's uh all the movies that an actor's done sometimes they get moved up because i think it was a good part for them or i think that even if the rest of the movie kind of tanked i think they did really great and so that kind of moves them around and doesn't always line them up side by side if that makes sense Basically, they're not always going to go in order of the star ratings. In 11th place, we have Project X from 2012. This movie really stuck its landing in pop culture, even if it's just kind of like a throwaway movie. A lot of people were really obsessed with it and refer to it a lot. I have a soft spot for it just because Thomas Mann is the lead in this, and this was one of his first movies. And as we've talked about before, and you'll see later, Thomas Mann is one of my absolute favorite actors in the world so I really love seeing them on screen together even if it was just for a second. Miles plays himself in Project X. It's pretty great. Uh, the kids are getting ready to throw a party and they run into the supermarket and they run into Miles Teller and he kind of plays off like he's like this big hotshot actor now and they convince him to come to this party of theirs. It's really just about all that Miles is in it but it gives them some clout and it's just Again, it's just fun to see them on screen together. I gave this movie two stars. It didn't personally affect me, but it also didn't feel like a waste of time to watch it. In 10th place, we have Insurgent, which came out in 2015 and is the second installment in the Divergent series. I gave this film two and a half stars, and to be completely honest, I can't differentiate them in my head at all. I can differentiate the first one but the second two completely mushed together in my head. But again, I like a lot of people in it and I really like Miles as Peter. In ninth place, we have Thank You For Your Service, which I gave two stars and came out in 2017. I just don't remember feeling emotionally connected to this film, which you definitely expect to be emotionally connected to it, but also I did watch it right after I'd watched Only the Brave and I really enjoyed that film and it did make a huge impact on me. And so I feel like that may have also decreased its rating. In eighth place, we have Divergent, which is obviously the first movie in the series. It came out in 2014 and I gave it three stars. It definitely stands out as the best of the three. And besides that, yeah, there's there's not too much else to say about it. In seventh place, we had Bleed for This, which came out in 2016. I really enjoyed seeing Miles as a boxer. I feel like that role definitely fits his persona, 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 persona. And I'll be honest, I haven't seen it since it came out in 2016, but I do remember enjoying it and thinking that Miles did really well, but it could stand a rewatch. And because I had watched it so long ago, I did not have a letterbox at that time, so I don't have a star rating for it yet, but I'll try to rewatch it soon. In sixth place, we have War Dogs, which came out in 2016 and is currently on Netflix, I believe, if you wanna watch it. There's definitely a certain type of film, I, I feel like they just all blend together, like Wolf of Wall Street, all these movies that it's just like white guys figuring out how to steal money and get rich really quick. And I didn't think this one was half bad. I gave it three and a half stars. I think that Miles and Jonah Hill together just works. It had the right amount of chemistry. Bradley Cooper is also in it for a split second. But I can't say besides that that it was too extremely memorable, although I liked it while I watched it, which is why I got three and a half. In fifth place, we have Two Night Stand, which is one of my favorite rom-coms in recent history. It came out in 2014 and I gave it four stars. I love this movie. It's just nice to watch. You don't have to think too much, 
but the two leads have great chemistry together. Miles pulls off that like charming but dorky balance and it's short at 86 minutes. It is a fun watch. I highly recommend it if you like any of the people in this film or if you just want to see that rom-coms aren't completely dead. Although I guess it did come out in 2014. It feels like it came out a lot more recently than that. I will say that the final act of this film isn't my favorite. I feel like maybe they should have spent a little more time on it, but overall it's just a fun watch. In fourth place, we have Only the Brave, which came out in 2017. I gave this film three and a half stars, and I really, really enjoyed it. It is a tough watch. It is a tearjerker. You'll want some tissues beside you. Miles gives an incredible performance, particularly in one incredible scene that he has to let out all of his emotions. It's a well-made film with a really great cast and I highly recommend watching it. We are to our top three and in third place we have Rabbit Hole which was his first feature film that he ever did and it came out in 2010. I gave this film three and a half stars. It's a really heartbreaking film about just tragedy and grief and how that affects a married couple who lost their young son. Miles plays an absolutely crucial role in this film and for his first time on the screen, he did an incredible job of holding his own um, in his scenes with Nicole Kidman. And I think it's hard to believe watching it that it's his first movie. In second place, we have Whiplash, which came out in 2014 and was directed by Damien Chazelle. I gave this movie four and a half stars and it has a 4.4 star average rating on Letterboxd. People love this movie and rightfully so. A lot of people consider this Miles's kind of breakout role when we started taking him seriously as an actor and realized the chops that he had, especially up against J.K. Simmons. I think of all Miles' films, this is probably my number one recommendation to everybody. I think everybody could stand to get something out of this film. It is very nerve wracking and it is very anxiety inducing. I will give that heads up. And in first place, we have The Spectacular Now, which came out in 2013 and gets a perfect five star rating from me. This movie is also based on a YA novel and also stars Shaylee Woodley, who is also in the Divergent series with him. Not everyone loves this film. A lot of people's complaints come from the script, which a lot of people tend to explain as kind of juvenile but I think that that fits the storyline. They're supposed to be in high school. I think a lot of more recent high school films or television shows kind of show us this really eloquent high school character that speaks in poetry, but that's just not how it goes. So I think it's completely realistic that this quiet, otherwise kind of invisible girl gets tongue tied and responds with like cool, and laughing when one of the most popular guys in school and her become really good friends. I think that Miles toes the line perfectly and playing setter between showing this kid who's super charming and the life of the party and spontaneous and brings life to the people around him, but also showing that as he grows up a little bit, he realizes that some of that devil may care personality is going to eventually be a detriment to his future and to his personal relationships. Most people, if not all people, are not one thing or the other. And he shows this great split between those two parts of his world and really personifies that internally and externally as Sutter. The next little bit of Miles' career involves Top Gun 2, if we ever get it. I think that that movie is going to do a lot for him and I've been super excited to watch it to see his performance. He's also going to be in a new uh, Paramount streaming service, either television series or short series about the creation of The Godfather. It's called The Offer and I believe it comes out in April. It also stars Juno Temple. And last but not least, I had to include I am a major Swifty and he was recently in the I Bet You Think About Me music video. I was absolutely floored when she announced that Miles was in it. I dropped everything I was doing and watched it over and over and over and over again. And then made everyone that I know watch it over and over and over again. I was 
so excited to see him in it and I think he did wonderful and it makes me happy to know that him and Taylor get along and are friends. Oh my god, she's insane. Let me know which of these films is your favorite Miles performance and I will see you soon.